So we spent some time today to get reacclimated with using Duplicator to restore the site. Then we've been talking about updates and other sort of behind the scenes things. We're going to have a discussion uh, on the larger concept of service providers and then we're going to do the duplicator backup because whatever work we've done now, again, we want to use it next time. Um, if you want to open your web browser, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about this concept of service providers. Because what you need for a real website is a domain and hosting. Domain is the URL, the address. You know, for example, victor.biz or whatever address you want to get. Well, that's just part of it. Just like in the real world, where I live is made out of two things, the street address and the building. I can own a plot of land at an address, but it has no house there. So the domain is like the street address, 123 Main Street. But the structure, the building, is something else. That's the hosting. Hosting is the server the hard drive space. That's where you upload WordPress to. That's where you have your products saved. So they go hand in hand. You need a domain, you need hosting. You need both of them. One without the other doesn't do very much. So that's what I'm saying about what you need for a real website is both. And I just mean real in that it will be real on the internet. Right now, our WAMP server, our WAMP version of our site can only be accessed on your computer as you're sitting down at your computer. No one can access your website right now unless they sit at your computer. You want, of course, a real website eventually that anyone can access all over the country, all over the world. So you're going to need a provider. So here's some examples. GoDaddy. Bluehost, Hostmonster, Hostgator, Dreamhost, and a ton of them. Does anyone know any other names out there that do this, that are providers? Sometimes people ask me, what do you think about X, Y, and Z provider? And I don't have an answer because I don't know them all. There's hundreds, if not thousands, of these all over the world. But I mentioned here GoDaddy number one because it is number one. It is the largest provider for websites. It's not, not the only one. It's, it's not all of these can have good and bad points. In my personal experience, I've had a GoDaddy account since like 2001. I've been paying them more than 15 years for my website. And I hardly have had any trouble in all of that time. I remember in the beginning, the very first trouble that I had with them, they shut down my site because I forgot to pay for it that month. That's when I was a starving student and I was paying month by month, and I didn't pay and they shut down my site. But then I paid for it, and then it came back. But besides that, I haven't had trouble. Now on the flip side, I've, known, I've had a client also since about 2001, and um, she's had, personally, she's had lots of trouble with GoDaddy. Uh, I don't know, I really think it's just some sort of bad luck, but with her, she had she has this site that does have a lot of traffic and a lot of um, files, and it just has a lot. And for whatever reason, the, the level of service that she's paid for hasn't been adequate, and even when she updates to more service, it still is not adequate, and maybe she feels it's expensive. And eventually, a few years, a few years ago, she gave up and she moved over to Bluehost. She's had no trouble at Bluehost. So all of these companies are going to have pros and cons. Sometimes you're going to have bad luck. But I do have to say with any service provider, you get what you pay for. 
and we'll look at prices and such at the, in a moment. Because there are some providers out there, one that I'll mention, but I don't want to mention it seriously. I think it's called 000webhost.com. Don't look into that one, really. This is free websites, zero dollars and zero cents. It's totally free websites. I don't recommend it. They got hacked very recently, like three months ago or something. And you get what you pay for. You get a slow site with advertising. So it's like, what's the point? You're going to be giving free advertising to other people. Why not do the upgrade and get a real provider? Because, like, in a house as well, you unless you've paid the mortgage off, you're paying for it until you pay that mortgage off, and if you don't pay it off, and you get evicted and all of that. So you still need to pay these companies. We'll see prices in a moment. But this is what you're going to need, domain and hosting. Uh, Possibly, um, because they offer such different levels of service. <coughs> they could. I, uh, we can look that up, actually. Um, you know, just information-wise, if you go over to whois.ican.org, you can look up some of these details and look up what providers are, is a website using. On the one hand, that's valuable because then you can look up, I like this website, what are they using? And it'll say Bluehost. And on the other hand, <coughs> it's my personal information being put out there by default. You can pay to have it removed, just like in the phone book. By default, everyone's phone number was in the phone book. You can pay to get your private phone number. Well, same sort of thing here with registration here with these providers. You can pay for private registration so that you're information is not public. Let's uh, look at GoDaddy first. GoDaddy.com. They are famous or infamous a few years ago for having these interesting uh, Super Bowl commercials. They were that big that they had Super Bowl commercials for like five years in a row. I should tell you something. And again, I've used them for years. And you hear both sides of it for all of these providers, the good and the bad. I personally haven't had much trouble. But I will say with any of these providers, you get what you pay for. We'll see what these prices are right here. It's going to say, choose a domain name, and there's .coms, .orgs, there's .store, .co. There's a bunch of other ones we can look at later. Dot, I think there's like .apartment dot biz dot ninja dot arrow <coughs> dot xyz there's all these brand new weird ones some are more expensive than others because every everyone's taken the dot coms dot coms have been around for you know, 20 25 years if you're just thinking about getting a website dot com it's probably taken now, all of these companies are, are going to be very similar in that they provide a bunch of the same services, and they're also going to say, hey, how can we help you? We're ready to sell. One month free trial, make your site live, $3.99 a month. Web hosting as low as $3.99 a month. Again, that's very affordable to get up and running right away, but once we start to talk about a more complex site like with e-commerce and such, this might be too low quality for what we're going to need. All of these companies are in so much competition that they're also going to sell you like an SEO package. Oh, you can get .nyc if you want a unique address like that. Brooklyn Denim Co. .nyc. The problem with these brand new domains is no one knows they exist yet. Everyone thinks that there's just .com. Maybe you heard of .net or .org. But if you ask the average person, okay, visit my website, brooklyndenimcompany.nyc, they're going to start typing brooklyndenimcompanynyc.com because the .com is so common. And there's a discussion about SEO to talk about in another class, perhaps. But the short answer to say is it doesn't really matter what your domain name is if you engage successfully in SEO. Yes, you're going to have some people that are going to still type .com over and over. My first website, 
that I still have around and I still use is vmcinc.net. And yes, there's plenty of people out there that are going to go to vmcinc.com and get to a spam website. But I'm building, I'm writing blogs, I'm using social media, I'm being active to make .net the number one result when people search. So the short answer is that the name doesn't matter as much if you engage in a lot of SEO. .guru, .club, .asia. Okay, so here's what I'm saying we need is a domain and we need hosting. So let's say I want victorsbakery.com. I search for that. Victor's Bakery is taken. Sometimes the domain is going to expire, and you can buy it when it expires because basically we're renting these one year at a time, five years at a time, ten years at a time. You rent these items one year, five year, ten year, whatever. And if you stop paying for that domain name, it goes away from you and someone else could buy it and then want to sell it back to you for ten times more. That could happen. Well, .com is taken, but victorsbakery.net is available. That might not be so bad. .org, .co, .info, .us. You can get it for one dollar right now. Next year it'll be twenty dollars. I can get dot net for twelve dollars now. Next year it's seventeen. That's very common. If all of these companies are going to give you an introductory rate, usually of one year, and I do see with all of them because I've got experience with all of these that I mentioned right here. They all start off with some sort of intro deal, and the price usually goes up, but like your cable company or phone company, if you call, you often get a better deal. I've had many times throughout the years that it's about to renew, but then I call them and say, oh, we found a deal for you today. And they apply it and I get the deal for myself or for the client. So the website is convenient because <coughs> you don't have to talk to a person. But if you talk to a person, you can often get a deal. Not the little chat thing here, a real person on the phone. Victor's Bakery dot menu fifty dollars. Dot Vegas dot equipment dot cafe dot kitchen forty dollars. So, go oh, look at that. If I want Victor's Victor Start or Victor's Art dot com, it's only two thousand two hundred ninety five dollars for the first year. After that, it's back down to fifteen. Nice. Save your pennies. And that's common. Some of these premium domains, because they have these keywords that are have a value, they can be very expensive. And it happens that sometimes what people do is, especially a few years ago, people would go in and just buy a bunch of domain names, hoping to sell it to the right person one day. For example, the people over at vmcinc.com had contacted me to say, hey, wouldn't you like your domain name? Because obviously it's a worthless site at the moment. The domain is for sale. Click here to make an offer. And you go through here. Offers under $500 are usually not considered. No need. I've built this fame and SEO juice on the .NET, so who cares about the .com? Yes, some people think .com is the only one, but they're all running out, and there's many other ones. Just to mess with them, what I did was I did email them and, and offered like $20. And I said, why would I pay $500 if I can get a domain name at GoDaddy for $14 and I'm offering you torti? They replied and they said, well, this is a, this is a uh, premium domain and sometimes these domains have a lot of value. Clearly not. What, what the heck is a VMC Inc.? That has no value to anyone except me because it's my initials. But these cyber squatters are in this kind of business where they try to get the perfect name, your perfect name, and then you're going to have to pay a lot for it. So we're seeing a variety of prices here. Maybe I want to go with victorsbakery.us, so that's one dollar. 
The other part of the equation that I need is the actual hosting. This is where it gets a lot trickier because depending on the provider, you're going to see a variety of options. I think way too many options. We've got web hosting, we've got WordPress hosting, dedicated, premium, cloud server, virtual, dedicated. Let's see if we can explain it a little bit. Different types of hosting. Shared, WordPress managed, VPS, is that what they called it? Yeah, VPS, and dedicated. So shared. Your site is on a server being shared. It's just like your, your computer has a hard drive. And if you have one folder with one site, there's another folder with another site. How many of you have a computer at home where you can log in with your name and it's got your stuff, and someone else in the family logs in with their name and it's got other stuff? That's the same thing that's happening with Share. Everyone's using the one server. That means everyone's using the same amount of RAM, basically, the same hard drive, all the same features. And so if one site has 20 plugins and 10 themes, uh, one site could be slowing down the other sites on the same shared tier. Now, the draw of why someone would get shared, it's the, it's the most affordable one. We saw there like $3.99 a month. Uh, let me get back to WordPress Managed in a moment, but VPS is Virtual Private Server. It's the next level up. It's more for you. Um, that is, you don't have a, you, your, your site is not, you know, bumping shoulders with other sites. You're not conflicting. It's not that one site's really going to conflict with the other. It's more about speed, that when you're on shared, one site could slow down another site. VPS is managed a little bit better in that your own site is like your own little kingdom and it doesn't get affected by other ones. But this one's then going to start to go up in price rather quickly because you it's like you it's like you've got a mini computer dedicated to you a virtual computer a mini computer in their main computer for you dedicated basically is a computer for you your own reserved ram chips and your own hard drive and your own cable in like your own computer in the godaddy um, campus that one is a little bit more expensive. Because right here you've got your own site with your own capabilities, all for you. Running 24 hours a day. This new one that I'm starting to see more often is the WordPress Manage. And these things have different names depending on upon the, the site. We'll look at other comparisons in a moment. But one of the names, WordPress Manage, this is, it's like shared, but focused on, uh, on WordPress. Um, it, um, it does often have limitations. But limitations might not be so bad because you just want to focus on building your site and that's it. The Manage WordPress often automatically updates your your WordPress software and such and it tests it for you and and it often um, shields you from some of the more detrimental things that you could do on your site I personally don't recommend it though because with the experiences my company has had with clients and WordPress managed it's training wheels for the things that we're talking about it's limiting doing the duplicator uh, plug in and doing the backups and migration and all of that, that stuff is often difficult to do in the managed WordPress. Shared 
comparatively is better because it lets you do a lot more. Yes, you're, you're sharing your server and all of that with those negatives, but managed WordPress often has that negativity. I had to do this for one of the clubs at Southwestern College. They had the managed WordPress, and I wanted to do some advanced things. I called GoDaddy, and they said, well, the version that they have cannot do this. It's shielded from some of these things. So I said, okay, please switch it over, blah, blah, blah. They switched it over. No, no big deal. I had to kind of reinstall a few things, but again, I, I needed to do advanced things. And then we were up and running with a better solution. And I'm not saying this is bad, but for the things that we've done in this class and other things that we'll, doing, that we'll be doing, it might be too limiting. If your site does what you need it to do, then this is the right answer. If you've got the money, I would go up to VPS or dedicated, but you don't need to go to these higher levels unless you have a lot of traffic going to your site, a lot of activity, a lot of products to sell, mostly traffic. If you're getting a lot of hits to your site, that's why you're going to go up to VPS or dedicated. Because within the level of shared, you, you have tiers here as well. Basic, medium, advanced. Even in within the low end, it said $3.99 a month. That was probably the basic one. Basic amount of storage space, basic amount of RAM and CPU. Well, maybe you double that and you get double the RAM. You get a faster site. Maybe you go to the third level. You triple from the basic price. You know, maybe this is still $20 a month compared to three. But then this one is $60 a month. This one is $200 a month. We'll see some prices in a moment. So I would recommend go to the medium or advanced versions of shared. Yes, you're going to get better hardware and such on these higher levels, but at the lowest level of VPS, still you're going to be doing like $30, $40, I don't know, per month you might not need it. You can upgrade from one to the other once you're starting to see that you're reaching your limits and such. Let's see here then. So we have all these options. Web hosting, which is their basic shared. WordPress, dedicated, virtual cloud. Cloud is similar to virtual but more advanced. Let's say I'm looking at web hosting, the basic economy, deluxe ultimate. $3.99 the first year, $7.99 the year after, $4.99, $9.99, $7.99, $14.99. That's the one I would go for. We'll compare other companies in, in a moment. You get one website with economy, unlimited higher levels. You get 100 gigabytes storage, unlimited higher levels. 100 emails, 500 emails, 1,000, free domain, you get a free domain. So you're going to get that .com for free the first year. Site backs up, back up and restores, they're paid. Over here, you're getting twice the processing power. Premium DNS, a, 50, a $35 value makes it easy to resolve common issues that prevent people from accessing. So sometimes, you know, broken links and traffic and such. And if you go to this level up here, you also get the one-year SSL certificate. We're going to talk about this in detail, but whenever you see that lock up on the web browser, that's security. We're going to be selling products. Do you ever go to a store where that lock is not there? People uh, aren't as aren't as ready to visit a site without the lock because that's security. If you go to your bank, it has to be secure. If you're going to put your credit card number, it should be secure. And that is not free. The security of a website, which is HTTPS, that's free. It's never been free. You have to buy it at any of these providers. And here you get it for free for one year. After that, it's probably about $60 on top of what you're normally paying. So you could start off with the lowest level and see how it goes. But again, I've had experience with, for, with this for years. Really, the ultimate level is going to be better.
on the next levels up, you don't even bother with the WordPress one, but if I go to virtual private server, the professional version, one, one gigabyte of RAM and other features, $25 a month. Three gigabytes, $34 for the first year, $50 after that. It goes to eight gigabytes. So if I was going to get any of this level, I would go for the lowest level. One gigabyte of RAM dedicated to your website is a good amount. And you can go in and further configure every detail, but again, it gets technical. Just to, just to look at dedicated, same sort of thing here. This is the lowest level starting at $80 a month or $129 after that. And then the highest one, 32 gigs of RAM for a, you're building the next YouTube right there, basically. $349 a month. Yes? How do you figure out what level of service you need? Have they done some sort of metrics to track anything like that? Yeah, it's going to be about the traffic. In the beginning, you have a website perhaps that doesn't have a lot of traffic, and as you build the traffic for it, you need more resources. But at the beginning, you don't know what you need exactly. So that's why, very concisely, I'm saying if you're going to go with the shared hosting, get the most expensive shared hosting. If you're going to go to the next levels of, like VPS, get the lowest level. Even at the lowest level of the more expensive ones, that's already much better than the highest level of the cheapest one. They sort of build it like that, and all the providers are like that. And everyone's going to vary depending on your traffic and your product and your multimedia and everything. So you pay what you get, what you get. You get what you pay for. Yes. That's that's something that that can be configured in your site and on the server. And uh, when we talk about the the shopping cart plugin, there will be a button there that says Force SSL. So even if they don't type it, the our shopping cart plugin will activate SSL for the person. Let's compare and contrast. I'm going to go over to Bluehost.com. Now I'm going to see that Bluehost and well. I'll say in a moment. Okay, Bluehost, they're having their Christmas in July sale, $349 a month. All of these are in competition. All of them have a 24-hour sales number you can call and ask questions. It's a sort of chat thing. Um, let's see, hosting, shared <coughs> hosting, cloud, WordPress, WooCommerce. Whenever any of these focus on a particular software, it's going to be one of these sort of training wheel deals. And they may work fine, but again, in my experience, in my company, when we do this for clients, these usually get in our way. We want to do it the advanced way, and these get in our way. They're training wheels. VPS and dedicated. Let's see, shared hosting, $349. I think GoDaddy was $399. You save a cool $0.50 cents here. $599 and $13.99. Now, Business Pro, regular price is $23.99. Over at GoDaddy, it was $14 or $16 or something. You get all of these different features. You also get marketing offers, $300 included. That's their way of saying that they're going to give you $300 or so free for Google AdWords and Bing AdWords and such. If you take the SEO class, we talk about how you have organic SEO and paid SEO. Well, they're going to give you free money to advertise effectively on Google and Bing and, and so forth on these higher levels. I don't know what spam experts is, but you get two of those. You get SSL, you get dedicated IP, domain privacy, you get backups. Let's see over on VPS. 
Well, minimum is $29.99. You get two CPUs, 30 gigs storage, two gigs RAM. It's pretty good. Over at um, GoDaddy, it's different, and it goes all the way up to Ultimate, $119 a month regular price, 24-7 tech support. dedicated standard $75 a month <coughs> looks like they just upgraded this to four CPUs instead of two and one terabyte so yeah you're getting really hardcore when you get to these levels I haven't uh, I haven't worked with any clients that needed this much much this much muscle because usually the shared one at the most expensive level has worked really well. And uh, you can always change this when necessary. We, we won't look at them all, but you can you can do your own research. HostGator is another one. $3.95 a month. How much does it all cost? Now, I'm forgetting which is which. HostGator has a parent company of either HostMonster or Bluehost. One of these two. I forget which one. One of these two. HostMonster or Bluehost. One of these two is the parent of HostGator. And HostGator, I've used it, but it's one of my least favorite ones because I believe it's also the most limited. Because over on web hosting, choose a plan, this is also pretty limited. There's just hatchling, baby, and business plan. There really isn't as many features, and it doesn't really tell you. You know, it just tells you you're going to get a domain, but it doesn't say anything about the RAM, and it doesn't say anything about the technical aspects. And I've been on tech support, and I've kind of tried to draw out a straightforward answer. They don't quite give me a straightforward answer. They said, well, if you need more power, go to our parent company. And I'm forgetting which of the two it is, but it's one of these two, maybe Host Monster. So. It works, and they have a cute mascot, but I don't know. I just think this is my least favorite one. When you get to these higher levels, you get better results. Again, you get what you pay. You get what you pay for. There's really no wrong answer. It's it's what you need and what your budget is. And if you don't know what to decide, get the highest level of the shared hosting and see how that works for you. Once you start to get a lot of traffic to your site, you may have to bump up then to the next level. And hopefully you have a site that justifies, you know, you're bringing in revenue from your site to justify the higher prices. Any questions about domains and providers, or domains and hosting providers? This is the part always that I have to warn. Let's say you, you got service at any one of these. Later on in the class, uh, when I talk about migrating your WAMP version of your site to your provider, Obviously, whatever I show you on screen, if I'm saying, okay, let's log into HostGator control panel, not everyone has HostGator. If I say, let's log into your GoDaddy control panel, not everyone has GoDaddy. So there's a certain point when I do that lecture that I, that I, I can't exactly show everything to every person because everyone's got a different provider. And that's okay because the concepts will still apply throughout all the providers. You'll just have different buttons to click. We'll get to that on the last day. Before that, we still need to work on our site. Next week, we'll be talking about adding the um, the e-commerce feature and all of that that it entails. Uh, but before that, we have to uh, do a backup of our site one more time to work on it next week. Any final questions before we do that? Okay, let's go back to our WordPress site. We've done this a few times. This comes from our Handout number four, we're going to do this first part here. So hover over the duplicator icon and select Packages. 
from the handout, we're starting on number five. We're in the duplicator screen. Click up, cre click create new tab at the top right here. Create new package. Create new backup. Create new archive of your site. Uh, on that screen, the package name, you may change it. Under notes, you can add notes. So I like to add notes because whenever I bring the site back to life, it'll tell you the note, what's in the archive. If you click note, and what we'll do here is, what we did was we added blog page, set it as placeholder and to the menu. What else did we do? We did updates. To do for next time. Add uh, e-commerce plugin. These are just notes for yourself when you resurrect the site. No one else will see this. Anything else here, these defaults should be fine, although sometimes it is necessary to change some of these. I'll talk about it later. Click Next. It's going to scan your site. If there are problems, it'll tell you. A common problem is that the total size of your, of your whole WordPress archive is a little big. It'll give you a warning or an error. If there are warnings, we can, we can still proceed. If there are errors, we have to fix them. So the common one is large files. Nothing's wrong here, but if, you're, if you upload items that are more than 3 megabytes, that's going to give you a warning. Because what it needs to do is it needs to find all of your files, zip them up and compress them, and larger files take more time. And if you bought like a low-quality server, I often see that the backup fails because the low-quality server is giving a little bit of RAM, a little bit of resources, and then this backup can't process all your changes. Everything seems to look good here. I will click Build. It's going to look for and find every single graphic and text, everything about your site, and the database over at phpMyAdmin screen. <clears throat> it's going to make a perfect copy of everything. Mine took 11.24 seconds. On a real server, it might take 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 2 minutes. Depends. I have the installer and the archive. The handout says, uh, after the build is complete, you get two files. Click to download each one of them. And then... move those two files into a folder with the date to keep them together. So click on Installer. I'm in Google Chrome, so it automatically started to download right there. If you're in another browser, it may pop up to ask you, save it or open it. You want to save it. Archive, that also just downloads right away. It may ask you, you want to save it. These should end up on the desktop. So on my desktop, I have the installer.php file, I have the zip file. I want to create a new folder with today's date and move both of those files in there. That's my copy. That's my work for today. Today is 7-Eleven. Did anyone go and get from, from some free Slurpees today? July 11th is free Slurpee day at 7-Eleven. You can still catch them, maybe. <laughs> should have told us earlier. I haven't had a chance to go either. Uh, so I made a new folder. I'm going to move both the zip file and the installer file in there. 
I'm going to put a copy of my work into the network folder. We're going to use it next week. You can take it now if you'd like. And that copy then is a perfect copy of your site. And you can work with that at home. I'm going to put my notes in the network folder as well. And so I've got all the notes that I wrote. I've got today's backup of the site. We're going to wrap up at this point and have a little lab time. When we come back next time, we'll bring the site back to life to get that practice. We'll add the plug-in for e-commerce. We'll see all of that entails, and then we'll keep moving forward. Yes? How do you, on the homepage, make it identical so that when they click on the logo on the top left, it duplicates So that they click on the logo and then what? Yeah, so the whole page is identical to when they go click back. You have two different things. You didn't you create a home two? Right. And this one is automatically home one. Oh, I see. So you should set that to home one also. Okay. So home one and home one. Yes. Okay. All right, everyone. So for the moment, we're going to wrap up at this point. We'll have a little lab time until 9.30. I'll turn the printer back on. Uh, make sure if you were everyone, well, make sure everyone today was new. So everyone should have taken the ad code and used it on the website to add themselves to the class. If you need help with that, call me. Just because you were enrolled here last month doesn't mean you're enrolled here this month. Make sure you enroll. Make sure you've also printed your name legibly on the sign-in sheet. You can sign out if you want, or I'll do it for you. That'll be it for the moment. We'll do it again next time. I'm going to upload the videos. Remember to request the videos, and we'll do it again next time.